even maps like Inferno, but this is back, you know, this is through the Pro League matches they played recently online against North American teams here. Um, I imagine they'll be a little bit more polished, but that is the one bright spot that Nip can hope for. All right, well, you guys can see the fly through is happening. Bringing you the action is going to be Anders and Semler. It's going to be, again, Nip just in pajamas taking on Luminosity. Again, no one's going home yet, but again, no one wants to drop to that lower bracket and uh, have those do or die matches. Anders and Semler, it is all yours. Thank you very much, Sir Scoots. And yes, I'm here with Semler. We're going to be heading into an incredible match, I think, between NIP and Luminosity on Mirage as well. What do you think, Semler? Are you excited? Oh yeah, man. I've had an emotional roller coaster over the past two matches. <laughs> I watched Envy get destroyed as I watched G2 just completely pummel uh, North America into the ground. It's uh, It's been a wild day for the Frenchies, but at least we still have one team in the running. Now we get to see, you know, Luminosity, the Brazilian hope. Are they going to be able to pull it off? Yeah, well, we're going to find out just about any second now. He's already live with the pistol round, and we do have Forrest sneaking into the middle behind that smoke. He's going to be very quick and looking for the fight. He's alone while the rest of the team is over by the B side of the map. One piece person sneaking under passes as well, so a little bit of mid-control for NIP, but it's still a bit sketchy. Get right here on his own with the Tech 9 armor as well. That's a lot to give up if he somehow gets caught off guard here. But they got to be a bit careful. Yeah, no utility left here for uh, NIP either to actually work with, so it's going to be just straight up work. I mean, they have to go for the fights, and already a trade frag happening on the B site. They do manage to get the bomb down as well, NIP, so Freiburg gets that plant, exists is there to watch his back, but Fallen, FNX, and Cold, they've already rotated onto the scene, so the pressure, it's going to be hot here for NIP to hold this. Freiburg looking to do a bit of damage, but Fallen landing one more kill. It's going to put it into a three on four. We're going to see if... They are going to be able to hold on here while the bomb is ticking away. Luminosity taking quite a while right now to get into position. They don't currently have a kit picked up. You've got to pick up Tacos at some point. FNX going down. Freiburg to full fur is next in line. Now it's all on Get right here. One on two. He's got the Tech 9 armor. This is the perfect combination. He goes for one. Goes for a second. Oh, he's going to get shot down by Fallen. But there is no kit. He can't find it either in NIP. They're going to come away with a pistol round. Simply not enough time. Whoa, boy, and Freiburg going vamos right now. A little bit of the smack talk coming out from NIP. I mean, they're showing the hype. This is a big match for them, obviously. Getting that first seed would be huge going into the playoff brackets. But, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on them right now. The analyst has touched on it. Pyth is not here. Threat has to step in. And so, NIP, they're a little shaky right now. They're not Look, feeling it. Even if Pyth was here, I would have picked Luminosity. Even if Nip were Fnatic, I would have picked Luminosity. I'm, I've drank all the Luminosity Kool-Aid at this point. I'm down. Oh, wow, dude. I'm ready. We're on, we're, you know, you get some good Kool-Aid, too, out here in NA. You know, and that's, I'm uh, that's good stuff. I'm president of the NIP fan club, you know, so I'm saying. How many fan clubs are you president of? Markaloff fan club, NIP fan club? Well, Markaloff fan club only has Lerpus and myself as a member. So I know, the diehard. That's, that's, that's a really, really small group at this point here. But, yes, I'm a proud member of the Markaloff fan club as well. Forrest going to be going down Taco with a really uh, clever position there. You could see that Forrest have his focus down at the van instead. Wasn't really ready for that one. So um, pretty good kill with the C-Set 75. Good as it ever was, it seems, if you know how to use it. Yeah, Taco, he's been stepping up individually over the past couple months as well. There have been some changes as far as positioning is concerned for Luminosity. And whatever they did, it's actually worked wonderfully for Taco because his individual level is definitely spiked. They can count on him to get kills now where it used to be a little shaky, where he used to be more of like the entry frag. I do also want to say something. I mean, you said I'm president of multiple fan clubs, but I mean, you've got the Swedes, the French, and the Americans. That's you right, can, man. You know, you've, you've, you're, you're covered either way, man. Sato was trying to talk some smack yesterday. I'm just like, I never lose. Whoever wins, I come out ahead. And FNX, same thing right there. He just annihilates Get Right. Great flash into the pit, and the second kill comes in here for FNX. Make that a third as well. Takes out Exist. What a huge round from Luminosity. Not losing a single player. And three, four, four rifles saved for Luminosity as well. Well, I hope you guys at home could hear them screaming. That's absolutely amazing. That's some real energy in this match within the first two rounds. Here's what's really, really mad. FNX, when he gets this first kill, just check this out. Uh, assuming the reload is going to be working here. Wait, FNX goes in and gets the first kill. That's it, right? Then NIP decide, well, let's try and set up for, a, you know, for some grenades anyway. You see Freiburg turning around, probably to put in a smoke or something like that. I mean, this is... this. It seems like they should be focusing all the time on that entry instead. That maybe that was a bit weird. Now that means NIP are a little bit behind here, but they got pistol and armor. They do get the first kill on fur. This is this is turning into a, a sort of one of those matches that's sort of real brawl where you just keep trading around 
again and again. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I mean, Fur going to top mid, it's, it, it can be questionable because NIP, they go for the force buy. Do you really want to get close range versus tech nines? I mean, that's exactly what NIP are crossing their fingers, hoping you're going to do. But at the same time, Luminosity, they're trying to break Nip's confidence right now. They just got rocked in the second round, and Fur, he was looking to just, you know, tomb them, put them six feet under, and take control of the match from there on out. Nip, they kind of checked that. So now it's going to have to slow down a little bit, and it's going to come down to the timings here, and Fallen will fall to get right, who picked up that AK that was donated so kindly by Fur. Got to be careful, FNX dropping low, Cold is also down to half HP. So they can't really afford to give up anything more to NIP right now. And what's really scary is that the A bomb side is also under the control of NIP right now. Except for one person, CT spawn. Taco going to go down and that was all the way over at B, but you still got to worry. And there's FNX to follow Freiburg. That's when Forrest helping out to get that kill there. So Cold all alone in the one on four. He's going to drop to Freiburg, who picks up a triple kill in the round with that Tech 9. And that's going to make it NIP 2 1 and Luminosity. They are going to counter force up. Now, it is so much easier being on the T side and calling the force than it is being on the CT side. If Luminosity lose this round, they're going to be so far behind in this game. Oh, man, we're getting a taste of an old meta here. And there's, you know, Envy, they're looking back and, you know, they got that tear rolling down their cheek. If only people would play like this with us. <laughs> if only they'd go into the force fight with us when we used to excel in these sorts of situations. Now, you well, know, Luminosity, they're willing to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If only we would do rounds like this and actually win them. I mean, that used to be <laughs> what the, what they would do. Used but, to be um, the bread and butter, right? Ooh. Oh. A little bit of a tag there. Got to be lucky that it wasn't uh, an AK, but Forrest going to be very aggressive and hungry. And Taco won the fight over there first time around. This time it's Forrest's turn. I've got to say, Forrest and Get Right, though, they have been playing out of their mind in this tournament so far. Uh, Forrest's individual level has definitely been looking very good. Since Threat joined up, it seems like he's had more leeway. He's definitely found himself. And Forrest has always been that kind of player. He's one of those legendary sorts in video gaming in general who can just like put down a game, come back six months later, still play at a top level. He never really takes uh, takes the hit. But when he decides to actually start getting that work in there, dedicating himself, that's when we start to see you know that god tier Forrest come back to the fore. And well, I mean, we have it's been a little shaky, but. We can see if he's going to be able to carry Nip through today because they're going to need it against Luminosity. FNX decides to step in and he stops that push cold. Get right steps in and FNX with two kills. He's roasting right now though and Exist will pick him off. He has Mercy. Exist with a double entry and Threat is there to get the drop on Fur. And just like that NIP, they're going to put a halt to things here for Luminosity. That was a very, very well orchestrated push coming out of Nip. That was very restrained. Nobody sort of got, got really panicked. And obviously that Molotov that landed on FNX was beautiful. So now... Cold hiding at the edge, and he has got a kit. I don't think Nip are going to let this one go, but we've seen crazier things before. Cold not waiting for the time to run out. Going to go and pick up the kill on one. Threat going to go down as well. Gold zero. Now in a one-on-one -on -one against Exist. He's got the time for it. Running behind the crate here. Exist has to run straight away. There's a lot of time to run, and Exist, he's trying to position himself closer. There's going to be the straight defuse. Exist waiting on the side. Cold, he's going he's to get a shot. He actually gets it. He'll have enough time. What a clutch coming out. And Cold zero equalizing the scoreline for 2-2. Two -two. That's a one on three against Nip surviving on one health. And you just have some players who are able to excel no matter the gun that they have. You give them a toothpick, they're going to get something done with it. They'll stick it in somebody's eye. This time around, it's cold. He steps up long range with the CZ, gets the pick, and then steps up close to threat and just catches him out completely. The CZ, man, it's just so good. And in the hands of certain players like Flusha, like Cold, they always just seem to get something out of it. Right, so... I mean, this is just very, very well done, isn't it? You thought it, maybe he'd go for the full defuse, and Exist is actually under a tremendous amount of pressure in that position because if you run in, well, you, you risk what just happened. You know, you could get killed. If you don't actually run in straight away, then you can't make it in time. The, the, the running distance from behind that box all the way to stop the defuse is actually some distance. Well, it, it, there's no slowing down. It's going to keep going here. Get right and Forest opening up on Cold and Taco. And this B bomb side is a lot more difficult to retake than A ever was, so we'll see if Luminosity can bring it back here. There's a lot of pressure on them right now. They only have the single kit picked up on Fur right now. He's got the MP9 and he's got the utility. The two rifles kind of stuck to, and stuck down here in Kitchen right now behind the smoke. So NIP buying a lot of time with the use of good nades here. But the backstab is going to be coming in from Fur and it just looks like Luminosity. They don't want to have anything to do with this. They've realized, well, you know, if we actually hold on to these three weapons, we can go for another force in the next round. So the best that we just back off, maybe cross our fingers and hope that we get lucky with an exit. But the main thing here is to keep these players alive. They need to keep these rifles still in the fight for the next round. Still, very quick. I mean, even with Nip actually taking the doubled HE to the face, that was like Forrest taking point. I mean, they just got naded down so hard right at the beginning. They were just so quick. I think that turn of pace, that, I mean, that, that change of speed coming in from NIP caught Luminosity off guard somewhat there on the B site. And you've got to wonder as well uh, if 
you know, maybe not quite yet, but in time, is Taco's confidence going to be uh, shook a little bit by the fact that Forrest seems to be having some, some pretty good battle against him over there? To see set 75 being the exception, but, uh, but you know, going into the, the sort of the middle of this game, you've got to be careful. If you keep losing the same battle, the same duel over and over again, you start to take it a little bit personally almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I think Taco has shown himself to be a very strong player, but he's also a young player. It'll mess with your head. It definitely will. I mean, again, we saw what Cold was capable of with the CZ. He's going to be holding close to short. Get right. Looks like he wants to try and apply some pressure here. He's got the incendiaries to try and clear out that angle on short. Freiburg sets up the flash. Get right comes in. Good teamwork being shown here by NIP. Very systematic and thorough play. But get right as that smoke clears, fall and just goes for the hay spray. He just throws it out there and he finally manages to take out get right. Get right not able to react in time. And Freiburg not in position to get the refrag means that there's a pretty decent situation here. Although, as I say, that exists does manage to find fallen from underpass. I need to go back and watch them of how many of these smokes were nips in the middle because it almost looked like they had sort of compartmentalized the whole middle of the map and were moving in between smokes to try and see if they could find uh, the right angle. That's pretty incredible, but Cold Sierra coming through just at the perfect time. Forest actually killing Exist because that was the Molotov that was put down earlier, but obviously Cold doing the majority of the damage there. Freiburg does spot one person and then IP still have time, 45 seconds with the bomb at the top middle right now. Trying to see if they can make their way in, and Cold Zero's flashed, actually. They couldn't possibly have gone any better for an IP there. Maybe a little bit of dumb timing or dumb luck there. For Taco looking to see if he can make it back, and this should be an easy fight. He's going to win it against Freiburg, and that gives them the lead with only 25 seconds here for an IP, but they can walk right into B right now, and maybe they're realizing that. It's a 3v2. They have the firepower. They still have a couple of nades to work with as well. Threat, he's hightailing it. And he does manage to make a pass. Taco gets the information, though, and the rotation is already coming out here from Luminosity. So all he has to do now is let that bomb go down exactly, get planted. Now they have all the time in the world here, Luminosity, to wait for NIP to try and, well, make a play. So that's going to be the big thing here. NIP, they need to find a kill on Luminosity to bring this back to a two-on-two -two and to give them a chance to win this round. And Threat, he's kind of out in the open right now. Taco, he's still kind of shoulder peeking on short, but that buys time for Fur to work his way up through B Apartments, and it's all on Forrest now from bench. He's holding the line. First steps out, but they peek them all together. Very well done there by Luminosity, working together as a team. Yeah, smooth, smooth retake coming into it. And again, we just keep going back and forth and back and forth. This is this is crazy. 3-3. Three, three. Now, you could arrive at a 3-3 three, three scoreline, you know, obviously with one team winning the pistol and then two rounds, and the other team sort of brings some rounds back. But they're just trading back and forth right now, and it does some really weird things to, to the economy, especially on the CT side. Terrorists usually have a little bit of an easier time sort of handling it, especially if they get bomb plants and everything else. So right now, it's really important for Luminosity to start stringing rounds together. The most they have on anyone is 2,500 on Taco. They have bought an AWP, so that's a good sign, but they need to keep going here. They can't afford to let Nip back in the game. Well, NIP, at least right now, once again, they're, get, they're applying some pressure in mid. They get that short smoke down. So that's going to keep Luminosity guessing a little bit. Again, Cold is going to choose to get up onto short. So just to have some eyes and ears here in mid, because Fur is holding fairly passively, and there's nobody in window. There's nobody in connector immediately. So three players here committed for NIP, and it's looking like it's going to be a split onto A. If they can find the entry here, this would be pretty big. But Fur, he's just waiting to see if there's going to be a boost up in the window. If he holds this spot, he might get lucky and actually catch out Exist eventually. Well, either him or Cold Zero is obviously playing on the other side, they're trying to come through. They're going to execute on Fur. He goes down. Cold is going to be dropped. The Squall falling to go down. FNX is next. And it's a perfect execute into that A bomb site. NIP only losing Forest in this battle and exists picking up a double kill. And that shows you a little bit of what happens when you give up so much mid control, uh, which Luminosity did. They even had the AWP, which normally if you have the AWP, you would you have sort of an advantage getting mid control. Now NIP are in prime position to be, uh, to be sort of running away with a large part of this first half. This is a really, really big round. Not only threat picking up here, but exist. That's the one detail that I really like to see is that they're adapting to the to the oh. favorite to the favorite positions here that Luminosity have shown. Cold, you know, once again playing ladder room. Exist not caught off guard by that. He instantly checks it to make sure that nobody can lurk up there and get a free kill. And guess what? He catches out cold. So that's Nip actually adapting to what they're learning here for of you know, they're learning about Luminosity's defense and they're learning how to take advantage of it. So get right here to open up things on Fallen. Again, at Luminosity, they want to challenge in mid. This is going to be a hard eco round out of them. Because that reset, I mean, that was brutal for them. They're down to 1,400 for the most part. And now Freiburg, he's kind of been left out to dry. So he will get run in on... Exist is going to be able to pick up the one kill, but it... Well, two. But there we go. That's what we were waiting for. Freiburg getting cornered out like that means there's an AK on the field. And one shot headshot with that AK, that gets, that gets the job done. Uh, well, 
they weren't expecting Forrest to be in the B or in the A bomb site so soon. But uh, otherwise, I was a bit bit worried that Nip would keep fighting in the middle because once you realize there's like three or four people in the middle, just let the rest of the team go and put the bomb down somewhere. Don't don't I really have to fight them? But um, at least they managed to do some damage. Luminosity killed two members of NIP, and if FNX can make it out with this AK. That will help some, but um, they're still in a, in a bit of a tricky position. Just, I do want to explain to anyone who's a new viewer, obviously, uh, the viewership today has already been incredible, so we have to assume yeah. that there are a couple of people tuning in who don't really know everything about the game. Um, the way the economic system works is if you if you lose consecutive rounds, you build up a round loss bonus, and it goes all the way to 3,400 if you lose five in a row, and then it sort of stops. It doesn't go infinitely. But that means the game sort of, in a, in a way, helps you to, to break a losing streak like that. Um, which is why it's so weird when they keep trading rounds, um, especially when on the CT side because you need to buy more equipment, new diffuse kits, your, your rifles are also uh, generally a bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. You gotta pay taxes. Yeah, you gotta pay taxes and all that stuff. You, you've got, you've got to make sure that you win consecutive rounds. If you cannot do that as, as on, on the CT side, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. You won't be able to buy the rifles, you won't be able to buy the grenades, and that's what we're seeing on Luminosity. Even here when they have you know, an all right buy going into it. We're missing at least a couple of smokes. We're missing a lot of Molotovs. Only one person has a diffuse kit. These are all things that could be very important at the end of a round. So we'll see if that's going to be a, a factor here in the ninth round. So the score is currently 5-3, favoring NIP. Yeah, they're going to be feeling very good about this, Ninjas. I mean, obviously, they want to just completely crush this T side, but getting up to five rounds early on here is going to be a, like a bit of a boost to their confidence going forward. It's up to Luminosity now to shut things down, and Cold is going to have the AWP not Fallen. So interesting change up here for Luminosity. You really do expect Fallen to be the primary opper. Not to say that Cold is incompetent with the, with the sniper rifle, but Fallen, he just hits these highs, man. He hits these, the, he, these crazy shots in these rounds that make the difference for Luminosity. Especially when they're far behind, it seems. Whenever yeah. they really struggle, I, I always try and look at Fallen because he seems to be the guy to, to sort of pull them out of whatever slump they're in. The bomb is all the way back in T-Sport and Ryan. That should tell you already that NIP are not looking to, to sort of, you know, take a bomb site right now or anything like that. And you can see how far get right is. They, they're just waiting for Lumosity to make a, any kind of mistake right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they might try and sort of throw some, some grenades in because that could also trigger Luminosity into to moving around. You know, you hear a smoke going down or a flashbang somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we get right so far into the map, um, it'd be nice if they could force a rotation somewhere. But that Molotov is very telling. First on point here, and he's going to get the kill. FNX picking up two as well. Very, very well handled by Luminosity. Not really any doubt in their mind this was what was coming. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that Cold didn't have more of an impact there with the AWP on short. Considering he's looking into Connector, get right, you know, Exist, they have to step into him. He misses a shot there onto Exist, and Exist, he knows that there's players around Pit, but he's going to get taken out eventually there by Fallen. And now Fallen, he gets donated an, AW an AWP. Thank you, Forrest. That's going to work out perfectly for him. Seeing as how they, it would have been a bit of a stretch for them to buy one on their own. See, my thinking was that because they got get right so far in, that maybe what they would do, try and do is, is smoke some of the positions in the A-bomb site. Yeah. Just use like two smokes to see if they could get them in there. And then if they do that, maybe someone from Luminosity starts rotating around. Maybe Fur, who's in that corner, that actually kills Get Right. Maybe he decides to sort of go and check what's going on on the ramp or anything like that. You know, it, it feels like Get Right was the one person who really shouldn't be giving up his position at that point in time. He's, he should be your lurk guy, yeah, basically. Exactly. And he didn't even have a smoke to block off short either. So as soon as he shows himself, the B defense can start rotating in to try and take advantage of that. And so I was, yeah, I was definitely a little worried uh, as well. I mean... For now, NIP, they still should be feeling pretty decent about things. They do have enough money to get a buy. Two rifles, an AWP, a couple of Tech 9s. Pretty light on the nades, though. And Luminosity, they were definitely expecting some kind of aggression to come out, or, a, or perhaps like a fast A execute kind of strategy to come out of uh, NIP, because they took those anti-smoke round kind of positions on that A site, close to pit, in Sandwich, and only the one man holding a connector. That's cold. Uh, Sadly, like you said you wanted Fallen to pick up the AWP, and they have done that. So now there's actually a double up setup that's running in here. Fur and FNX starting off very well indeed. Finally exist with one reapply, but they need a lot more. Even if they lose this round, which it seems like they will, they need more kills. And Forrest in charge of doing just that. A fantastic double kill. AWP is still in hand, and we've been saying he's been playing well. And if it truly is the Forest of old, then Luminosity have got to be scared now. They this is these are some of the rounds that Forest could really win. And I I would I would say still I think he's he him and Get Right and uh, just a few other people are sort of in a class of their own like that. So we're gonna see if it's gonna be working out. 35 seconds here, running all the way to top mid. He can't expect someone to be there. He won't. And Taco will take him out. So a really good call on Taco actually. Um, here's the power of this top mid position. Um, that he, the, the one fear that Taco has to have when he goes up there is that Forrest has already made it through into the B-bomb side. If that happens, then he will essentially be giving false information to his teammate. He'll say, well, he hasn't come past here yet. I think he might mm -hmm. still be in T-spawn. But 
if he is there and he sees it, he can see all the way into the apartments and he'll know. So even if he can't get the kill, he'll know that Forrest has crossed and that's it. That's all he needs. Oh, it's a surprising decision for Forrest to throw that smoke as well because given Taco's position there, I mean, he sees that smoke go down, he actually knows exactly where Forrest is. He's yeah. like, oh, uh, well, okay. Too. I know the angle that you need to throw the smoke from. So, um, right. Should be fairly uh, clean cut for him. He knows he's got him boxed in a T-spawn. I mean, still... Forrest did the best that he could in a 1v2. Not going to be able to pull off that clutch this time. Cold, however, he doesn't spot exist. Getting up in a window, but Fallen holds his own. Point blank with the P250. He stays alive and goes out for more. AWP manages to pick off Forrest. That's going to leave Threat, Freiburg, and Getright as the last three alive here for NIP on this eco round. And once again, NIP really just putting a lot of focus on mid, but that's about to cost them. Fur with the backstab. Threat trying to do the best that he can, but yeah, just not going to pan out. Fur doing quite a bit of damage there with the MP9. Yeah, I feel like we've had a lot of, of sort of submachine gun kills from Luminosity. Even in, in even when NIB has been having rifles, they've been picking up that MP9. So the first economy is looking pretty good. So is Tacos, so both of them around five or 6,000. NIP, on the other hand, they spent everything in this one round here uh, to try and try and make this work. Now, the scoreline is 6-5 favoring Luminosity right now, but that's not so bad. I mean, NIP, I think if they can get past six rounds, I think six rounds, we have an even game. If they get past that, then they're looking really good. I'm really well starting to wonder when NIP are going to decide to start rotating towards that B site. And this is also the question that Luminosity are asking themselves. When should they try and, you know, cheat a little bit and get a couple of players over there? And right now, I mean, they have a very clever boost, one that we very rarely see. Look at this angle! Boosted in from underpass? Cold able to pick off Freiburg. And then uh, easy entry there. And that's, I mean, this is horrendous here for NIP. They've lost threat now as well. Cold is going to be able to rotate in, put the pressure. Get right, trying to bring it back. He does take out Taco. And they do have the three players on the A side here, NIP. And the kill through the smoke from Exist. There's the difference maker. Yeah, that's a huge kill. And Cold Zero maybe with a mistake because he could see the traces there. Fallen missing a shot. You can't do that. Oh, he gets the kill anyway on Forest. That's going to bring it back into a two on two now. But they need to retake this. And Fall is on 20 health. This is definitely not going to be easy. One grenade going out there, just FNX trying to buy some space from up in apartments there, and it forces Get Right out into the open. Falling going to pick up the kill. That smoke really working out. Exist out. Oh, he's going to go down as well. FNX picking up the shot, and that's going to be a defuse happening from Fallen. That one smoke forces Get Right out. Fallen's in CT spawn mm -hmm. waiting for it. That's a, some very good improvised teamwork coming out of Luminosity, giving them a seventh round. And um, NIP, because of the bomb plant, and this is important, again, just another detail for uh, for any new viewers, anything like that, if you put the bomb down, uh, even if you lose the round and everyone dies, your team, everyone on the team still gets $800, and that's exactly enough for them to make a buy this time. Without the $800, uh, this would have been either a, a really, really mad Tech 9 Forcer, or it would have been an Eco, so the, the, the bomb plant here makes a huge difference for NIP. Uh, it's just, I mean, it allows them to get full rifles and a couple of nades to work to go with them. And again, NIP going to be focusing on that mid control. There's the short smoke going down that allows them to get Freiburg behind the box and Fallen. He's just waiting. And he even expects some kind of play to come in out here from NIP. You can take that risky play sometimes, decide to push through that smoke onto short, and Fallen, he's getting into position to counter that. And he's even worried about the boost considering now they've lost their eyes on mid. It's all on FNX now. He's trying to hold, but he's just like waiting basically for a flash, for a nade, something to give it away because he's got Fallen here to call for it as well. Molotov is perfect. It actually sort of, well, I mean, they could have kept looking at FNX, but they, they had to get out of the way, and he peeks just as they're moving. So very good stuff indeed. Falling going to get that kill on Exist. Maybe a little bit too many times boosted into window, and they've seen it coming by now, and Threat turning his back. I think he thought maybe there would be someone on short. That wasn't going to be the case. Forrest picking up one kill. They might get another bomb plant in here, NIP, which would be helpful. He legs get right in. If he had gone down, that would have been the bomb. Uh, out of the round, essentially. Two on four, and NIP should not be winning this round. And in a one on four for Forrest, it looks like they definitely won't either. He's just trapped in this corner, AK in hand. It's going to be Cold Zero to take him out. And Luminosity finally starting to string rounds together. This is going to be the fifth round in a row that uh, the Brazilian team has won. And this is all off of adjustments that, are, that they're making to their defense. They're realizing, Nip, keep going mid. I mean, they take the risk. They know that there's a little bit of extra pressure on NIP in that last round because they had ecoed before it, so then they're going to go for the buy. They decided to take a risk luminosity with that boost with cold, and that's an unorthodox boost. We very, very rarely see that one. It's a little risky because if they come in, if Exist, he keeps going underpass. If Exist wins the duel versus the guy who's boosting up cold, then cold dies, and you can lose two guys just like that for luminosity. But the risk pays off. Last round, they give up mid and just decide to play for peaks. FNX holding a clever spot in, in connector. Fallen there to watch his back. It's just nothing really working out for NIP. They keep getting hard countered now that, that Luminosity have had some time to figure out what their tendencies are on this T side. 
Look at these grenades from NIP. They're so good. There's going to be a quick play all the way up. Catwalk right into Cold Sierra. And if Get Right could have won that fight, you bet you that would have triggered the rest of the push into B. They're going to try anyway here. And Taco will lose the fight once again. But Cold Sierra is absolutely unstoppable. Getting three kills in the Harpy Boy for the round. Finally goes down. Falling going to be taking care of Freiburg. And now it's all on threat. The coach and Fallen will stop him dead in his tracks. 9-5. And moving into the 15th round here. That is a really, really good execute. You see how... Fallen with the open window, he can't actually get the orb shots off. It, it's, it has to be called Zero to take out Get Right, but he's allowed to run all the way in there. And if Cold goes down, that B bomb site is going to fall within seconds. Yeah, because then Taco is basically all by his lonesome. Yeah. The fact that Cold holds on this long just allows for the rotation to come into Kitchen. That makes all the difference. This is six rounds in a row now for Luminosity. 9 5 the score, and Luminosity. I mean, they're looking fantastic. Now that they have the economy rolling, they have the options as to who gets the AWP. They have all the nades as well. It's making a world of difference here. They've got that confidence as well. I mean, this is the 15th round, and, and of course NIP are going to go for the force buy. It's the last round of the first half here. And, you know, after going to B the last round, they're like, okay, let's go back to A. Hope we get lucky. And, well, catching off fur like that to start, it's not a bad start. Bomb well, still... Very, very far back. And yes, you're absolutely right. When you are in the when you're on the T side, you really do want to trade. Now, five rounds, I think, is is still workable, but it's 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 getting a bit scary for NIP, especially considering how everything started out. You know, you'd you'd want more than five rounds here. Six, and I think we've got a very, very even game in our hands. But mm -hmm. that that kill that just came in. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. FNX in good position, taking one, going for a second. They're beautiful headshots. And it's gonna be a quad kill for FNX. He's looking for one more here to get the ace to close out the half. And that's not a bad way to finish either. Exist looking for a bit of an opening here. He's got the M4A1, so maybe just giving him a bit of a chance to kill someone. Not just, just yet. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. <laughs> Spray through it all. Oh, Fallen, come on. Steals the ace. Still 10-5 with Luminosity winning the last seven rounds in a row here. Um, that's very, very impressive. Now that was a super sick half, and that's, I mean, this is all about the economy. Once they get into that slugging fest, basically, that was happening at the beginning of this half, I mean, NIP definitely not expecting FNX A to come back and pressure Palace again. So once they lost Palace control and Fur got picked off, they decided to come back into it with FNX. He decides to take the risk for Luminosity, and he has to step up. He has to get control back in the situation, because Nip are favored in a four-on-four -four situation. They go onto the site, and they can definitely yeah. overwhelm them. So what happens is FNX is like, okay, I'll go back into Palace and see if they you know, decided to rotate somebody back in here. Gets the kill there, and then posts up right in front of Pit. I mean... It's just super sick, aggressive, yeah. confident, like confident kind of CT play where it's just like, actually, if I die, this could be a problem for my team. But I'm not going to die, Anders. I'm going to get both of the headshots. And it's, it's also a I'm going to get a quad kill. I mean, that, yeah, what a way to finish. He's also finished with 21 kills, by the way, top yeah. tracking, obviously. Um, what's, what's so freaky as well is that that's such an off angle to be holding on the, on the ramp when, he, when they come out, uh, the second two kills he gets. You can't really expect that. That's not an angle you'd normally check. You know, once you, your, your fear walking around that corner is someone going to be up in the boxes, and then your second priority is always going to be if someone's sort of straight right if they're, if they're mm -hmm. close to you. So he's just in the middle of everything, and that, that makes it really hard to predict. You're, you're not sort of mentally going to be prepared. Um, yeah, so it's so a good use of off angles for FNX, and, and it lands him a, a really, really important quad kill. You got to give it to FNX as well, man. Right now, he's just locking things down. You're right. Yeah. I mean, Fallen, he didn't have his op for, for quite a bit, obviously, at the beginning of the half, so not really able to get up and rolling himself. But 14, 4, and 5 is a respectable co score line, along with Cold, 14, 4, and 9. I mean, it's not like Fur and Taco, you know, they, they've been letting their team down. It's just that the other, you know, there's not a whole lot. To go to go around, FNX is kind of hogging it all here. The top three mean, right now, they're just getting all the kills. This is a this is obviously one of a really frustrating match for, from Taco's point of view because he's in B and the only action he sees is when stuff is happening in B and most of the, for most of that time he just got entried by Forrest or somebody else. So you know, either nothing is happening on your side of the map and when it does, there's a really good chance you'll die even if you just take someone with you. So not uh, making too many excuses, but but that B position especially. Um, you really can get like the short end of the stick a lot of the time. Yeah, uh, I mean, look at NIP. Like they just went A pretty much the entire first half. There was like four rounds that they went to B total out of the entire first half. It was all mid control and A splits. That's all Nip were doing. So Taco just not going to get a whole lot of action over there playing, you know, the steady anchor on that B site. Now we go into the second half. However, it is 10-5. Luminosity have swapped over to the T side and they're already gearing up for a bit of a play in well, mid. I mean, they're going to go straight on to B here. And look at this NIP. Only they only have someone spotting. They're actually playing a retake on B bombs and the pistol round. That is very brave and it's going to be scary for them to actually try and do this. Luminosity are in great position right now and they even have on catwalk FNX who was hiding in the smoke all along and stabs get right in the back. That's absolutely fantastic. 
What a way to get started here. 10-5. And we'll see if they can continue. Taka would have got close range. He's going to get the one kill in, but Threat will be able to reply for us with a good headshot. They need a lot more, and it looks like it's not going to happen. Exist here gets the one kill in, but FNX is still in a good position right now. Exist has to go and hunt him down. He doesn't have a kit picked up either. He can't waste any time. He jumps around the corner, and FNX will shut him down to get his 24th kill in just 16 rounds. And I'm wondering what the hell happened there. Was that miscommunication between FNX and Cold? Did they not figure out where Exist was shooting from? Because he had the silencer. Because F yeah. Cold comes off the box and he's looking towards short. He's looking towards FNX. So that's like the last place he should be looking. He should be looking, you know, well, obviously towards Kitchen in this case. So, yeah, a bit of a bit of an odd little moment there that made it happen, you know, that made it go to a 1v1 clutch. But I, f I feel like there could have been a situation there where it was a 2v1 and, you know, Exist just, just gets caught in a crossfire. So, you know, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting turn of events. It looked a bit confusing, yeah, it definitely did. But sometimes that's it, in the heat of the moment, you can't communicate properly sometimes, and, well, those kinds of situations happen, but you can count on FNX right now. He is the anchor, and Taco taking point going on to the A site. Very quick execute here for Luminosity. Very little respect being shown. Freiburg with a good kill, taking out Fur. I think Cold Zero must have just realized, since I can't move forward, that kind of has to be somebody in that smoke, and threaten get right. This one's a bit of a, a f sort of a, you know, an arm around full NIP. They did pick up armor and, and upgraded pistols. Wanting to see if they could, I guess, replicate the, the madness that was going on in the first half with all the rounds being traded. That didn't quite happen here, as you could tell. And um, this is going to propel Luminosity. I mean, unless NIP could upset and surprise us in the next round, that's probably going to make it 13-5 before NIP could, could realistically buy. And at that point, Senra, it, it's going to have to be a complete shutout half. They're going to have to yeah. lock Luminosity out of the second half for this to work out. And, I mean, you're dealing with FNX, who has only died six times. He's 25, 6, and 6. Like, this guy, once once Luminosity got the ball rolling, he just stopped dying. He just didn't die again. He was just, like, invulnerable. He went full god mode. All right. Well, well I mean, I'm, I'm I mean, really curious to see what NIP are going to be able to do about that. I feel like that's one of the that's one of the exciting but also slightly weird things about watching Luminosity play is that you really don't know who, which one of them is gonna is gonna come out with guns blazing. We've seen we've seen matches where Taco has been been sort of leading yeah. the charge as well. So um, obviously, Cold and, and Fur, I guess, are like two of the heavy, really really heavy. I always think of FNX as more sort of a cleanup guy and come in and, and you know take care of business once it's a one on two or something like that. Um, but it, it it's all over the place with this team, which is which must be frustrating to play against as well. It's not like you can you can sort of sh you know get the entry on one player and say, well, at least he's out of the way. You know, the rest is going to be a little bit easier. Not necessarily. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, Fur is still a real danger in his own right. For God, I mean, the guy can be a monster and fall on as well. I feel like I feel like Fur, especially on Inferno, it's almost like you did. And there's something good about you know Inferno. So I'm good about that. I like that. I see what you did there. I just, even on Twitter, you know, I'm just coming up with great, great puns. Seems like Luminosity have also seen a bit of what Nip have in store for them. They've gotten mid control early on, didn't find anybody there. They don't see anybody pushing in B apartments, and they are going to go back towards A. So maybe I'm lying, because Nip decided to stick with the stack. And this is going to be a bit problematic here. Freiburg gets caught out. So Taco is able to spot him there, but now Freiburg knows there's an AK in the instant running headshot, of course. So now Taco is going to have to play it very carefully as he tries to come out of the site, onto the site, rather, from the palace. Uh, Freiburg picking up a good kill there, USP has in hand, and Luminosity, uh, they do have time to run back if they wanted to, but uh, I, I mean, you have all these rifles, maybe you're just not going to, actually, they are putting the bomb back here. There's just enough time for it, while the rest of Luminosity are waiting around, just checking out what's going on at the A-bomb site. 25 seconds, and they're bringing the bomb back again, so you can tell there's a lot of communication going on right now on the Brazilian side. They're really trying to stay on point here, and Freiburg is in the site with about 15 seconds now, looking for another shot, not quite going to do it, and exist. If only he could stop the bomb from going down with 10 seconds here, that would be fantastic, but obviously not in position to do that. And he's going to get taken out by Cold Zero, who has about five health. So um, 13 to five, and this is where NIP have to make their stand. And they cannot even buy an AWV to do it with. Yeah, exactly. They've been investing a little bit. I mean, they still managed to squeak out a few nades here along with the M4s. Nobody has to skimp per se and go for the FAMAS. A bit surprised to see them going for the head armor. I mean that that's an extra HE, an extra flash, or a kit in some cases. So I mean, a little bit a little bit of an interesting interesting choice coming out there from the Swedes on how they choose to allocate their money. But Forrest has got a kit. They have some nades, and they really need to come up with something big. And you almost want to see them take a little bit of a risk and start challenging. But Luminosity just aren't letting that happen. They're going for a very fast B execute, straight split onto the site. Get right does manage to trade one for one with Taco, but then it's all going to be coming down to. Well, I mean, it's all going to be on threat. 
This yeah, is it. It's, but... it's the, the in-game leader. Can he do it? He's hiding in this one. They're shooting at him. The grenade follow-up. They knew that he was there, and Forrest is going to get taken out as well. What an execute here. I actually thought Get Right would go down without taking anyone with him, but he just had enough bullets to get the first kill there. Freiburg taking one in return on FNX, and NIP, I mean, they're right there, but getting out of Kitchen is just immensely difficult when everyone's got their aim trained on just that position. Fallen, perfect position with the AWP going to leg Freiburg, and it's enough to get a kill. It's just going to go down. And Cold Sierra picking up yet another double kill for also a 29. Oh, sorry, FNX at 29. He's one away from the 30 bomb. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, this is, that was just super clean work, right? That, that's clearly something that Luminosity have worked a lot on. I mean, aggressive flashes to stop any kind of rush coming out from NIP. The Molotov in the connector just to try and split anybody if they did try and push out. The, the, ch the smoke chain on short. So if somebody's spotting from window or back into connector, they just aren't going to spot Luminosity running right up until they're already in Get Right's face. It's like, surprise! But that's exactly what NIP did as well. So, I mean, NIP probably should have been, if they had anyone spotting middle, which I'm not sure they had, but, but you know, mm. Get Right should have known because that's what he did. You know, he ran into Colts here on that same position. Oh, here we go, the force. Let's see if it actually pans out here for NIP. It's all or nothing at this point. And Taco, he's just allowed to just stroll right into the site. He goes right onto Excess and gets the headshot on a Freiburg. They just cannot stand up to this Brazilian brutality coming out here. NIP, it's down to threat. He didn't just climb that ladder, did he? He just, he just, <laughs> he just, just fired up. He shot up the ladder. Just really, really aggressive. It's all right. Calm down, Taco. <laughs> that was sick. And then the second kill, man. How, like... What was what was the guy on the uh, on the side doing? I guess he was trying to wa he was watching Palace as well and just did not see Taco get up the ladder that quickly. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. no idea. It's hard to know exactly what's going on there. First shooting at the corner and threat walking into it. Not that he really had any out uh, in this position. Fifteen to five is the scoreline here. So we are one round away from Lunosti winning here at the winners match as well. So it doesn't mean NIP, they're not out. Mm -mm. Uh, they get to play a best of three, in fact, to, to stay in the tournament. But exactly. uh, they they are playing what I think many would consider at this point, maybe the, the sort of the, maybe the second best team in the tournament, or at least at least top three in they're the tournament. Up there, yeah, exactly, they're top three. I mean, Envy are out of it now. Astralis, Navi, Fnatic, Luminosity, those are pretty much the teams we expect to make it into the semis and start battling it out for the title. And yeah. I mean, you can see why. There's just a huge gap right now between what NIP can bring to the table and what Luminosity are capable of. Luminosity, they've just, ever since that brawl started in the first half, I mean, they've never given up control. NIP have not been able to get their game going whatsoever. So, I mean, now we have another force coming out here from NIP. They try, they try to go for the rifles, but they just don't have the money for it. So it means a scout on Exist, an MP7 on Freiburg, Shoddy on Get Right. It's shocking because NIP actually came out of that brawl ahead. You know, mm -hmm. they, they finally forced Luminosity to eco, and that's what you don't want to do, right? But, um, didn't didn't even matter at that point. They were just gonna come back anyway. And playing around like this is so difficult when you're in IP. You're already out of grenades. You have one HE and one flashbang. And um, I, d I don't know what you're gonna do at this point. Lunosti are playing it very slowly, which means soon they're gonna they're gonna sort of put two and two together and realize, wait a minute, guys, there are no more smokes going up. So they probably have none. That means we have a lot of options with how we want to execute. And they're making, this is a pretty sick choice as well. They've had six, I mean, they have the utility A if they want to apply the pressure on mid. See that short smoke going down, that's going to put a lot of pressure on Exist now to try and come up with something, some kind of info. And you can see them hopping all over the place, just trying to spot somebody. But there's nobody to be found. Taco's lurking over on the A side, and it's just going to be Luminosity pushing Fur up here into B apartments, putting the pressure on Get Right now. And there we go. Get Right goes duck hunting, and he gets donated a rifle. Wow, well, that was a bit of a knockout blow, wasn't it? Fur going to be going down. FNX trying to sneak in here, and he drops the Freiburg. In fact, Colts here on Taco coming back into it. It's all now on Forrest and Freiburg to try and stay alive here, and they won't. Colts here on Fallen to end it 16-5 in favor of Luminosity Gaming, and they are going to move on in the group. And a very, very uh, decisive victory, you could say, for them. Yeah, brutal. Just brutal. NIP picking up no rounds in the second half. I mean, Taco waking up a bit in the end. Interesting to see him in that new role over in the Lurk on Apartments. And rather than just being that straight entry fragger, which he was before, now they're trying to, you know, show some, some variety in their setups. But, I mean, FNX, man. Like, he just completely went ham this game. He didn't get his last kill for the 30 bomb know, somewhere. It's, so, it's such a shame, but, you know... If they would have given him the ace, it would have been everything. He gets a day to contemplate that, you know? Get rested How up. How do I get better? Show up for the arena, because that's it. They got that first seed. They're going straight into the quarterfinals now.
That's uh, so obviously very, very. I think I think everyone who's going to be at the in the nationwide arena uh, have must have been looking forward to seeing Luminosity play. Because if you, if you saw them in in Katowice, if you saw them at the last major, you, you know just how good they are and you know how much fun they are watching. So um, what a hard situation for Threat as well. I mean, right now it's just a kick in the teeth for NIP. They lose one of their heavy hith hitters. That's Pith, Pyth, Pith. I mean. Yeah, he, they expect him. I mean, he can op, he can rifle. He's he's got an impact for NIP. They count on him to get kills, and now they find themselves. You know, it's like two years ago when Fifth was still playing. Well, you know, they, they've got a guy on their server on their team who's getting six kills in a key match. Like, you, it's a lot. It's it's tough. I mean, yes, he's in game leading, but he's not having any impact in the game really. It's also just that when you're playing the game, like th Threat has the advantage of being. I mean, he's tactically strong, and he, and he has been. Yeah. He always has been, but so. If you're looking at the game as an outside view or someone who's not at the keyboard and mouse and you can sort of look at what, what your team is doing wrong, it's much easier for him to sort of chime in and say, actually, guys, this is what's not working. When you're playing the game yourself, how is he going to do that? You know, he's focused on uh, all sorts of other things, too. So his impact as a tactician is diminished so badly by him being in the game. Yeah, so by I think being rusty. Yeah, well, so, I mean, it's, it's the fact that Pyth is probably like more on point with playing the game mechanically. But Threat also is less of a tactician in the game. It works both ways, and that's much worse, obviously. What we do have, uh, luckily, on the stage is Red Eye ready with an interview to see what Luminosity think about uh, this uh, pretty big victory. Thank you very much, uh, Fallen. Congratulations on another great victory. I said to you, just jokingly, you, know, you seem pretty calm, but you said no. Why? Uh, I think inside I am very tense because the game was very difficult. Despite the result, it was 16-5. Uh, in the beginning of the, the match, every team was getting a point, so... Every single time our money was being broken, and the same for them. Uh, but I think if an X step it up and decide the game for us. I mean, talk about the early game, because it was. It was 1-1, 2-2, 3-3. It's like a couple of heavyweights in there, slugging it out every round. What was going on? Yeah, exactly. We lost the pistol round, and then again, just like the first match we played on this major, we won the second round. And some mistakes on the third round, they got the point. Then Cold Zero saved us with a 1-3 on clutch. It was an insane play by him. And then they got another point again. And then for some time, when the match goes like this, it's normal, at least for my players, for my teammates, they get a little nervous. Like, I remember there was a round, they were too, kicking too, they were too worried about someone boosting on Windom. And it's like someone said that ten, ten, ten times, like, guys, be careful, they can be Windom. But we're not paying attention to the game, and they exploded on an A split and we got caught off guard. So after that round, they say, guys, calm down. Uh, we know there could be someone on Windom. Just relax. And then, uh, happily, FNX stepped it up. I mean, he, he made all the plays that we needed to come back in the game. And after we catch ourselves getting some rounds in a row, I think we got confident again and the game started flowing way better. Is it is it easier or harder playing against a team that you know is potentially weaker because they've had a player change? Do you, is it in your mind you think they should be easier, but is it harder? Well, it's ther in, in theoretically speaking, it's easier because, you know, Pyfe is theoretically supposed to be better than Thrift. But if you look for the past game they played, the first game they played, Threat played very well. Like, there are some rounds that he decided for NIP. And taking Threat aside, you have foreign Legends players. NIP guys are way too good to, to think it's going to be easy or something. So I don't think it's easy because Threat's there. And he's their coach. He knows what Pyfe's supposed to be doing, so he can do it. Even if it's not with the same quality, Pyfe could do it. So by no, by no means I think it's easier because we're not of him. So we treat this game as the same if Pyfe was there, and I'm glad we took the victory. Okay, a year ago I interviewed you many times, and it was always on the verge of, oh, we're almost there, we're getting better every time we're improving, we're, we're through to the quarterfinals, and you were thrilled to get to the quarterfinals. Since then, you've made semifinals, you've made finals. Is the pressure good or bad for you now? Because there is more pressure on you guys, isn't there, to reach those finals? Yeah, I wouldn't say pressure. It's like more desire. I think everyone wants to be the champion for at least once. <laughs> let's, let's hope Fnatic let us win at least one. I'm kidding. But, I mean, it's not a pressure because something that we discuss internally, I say, guys, don't think too much about the tournament, about the title itself, because if we start overthinking about it, it's probably going to be harm for us. And we're going to be nervous and this kind of thing. So... Last three past majors, we become legends, and we stayed on the quarterfinals. So this time, we want to go further. But it's pretty good result already. People sometimes only think about who is winning, but if we're part of the eight best teams in the world, it's something you should be already happy for. So I'm happy for us to qualify, but this major wants more, so we're looking for some finals and finals, hopefully. Okay, well, best of luck in the quarterfinals, because that's exactly where they are right now. They are in the quarterfinals. Let's find out what our analysts made of it with Sir Scoots. Thank you very much, Paul. Again, another... 
good interview by Paul, and he always gives a good interview. And again, like Paul said, they have booked a trip to the quarterfinals. They're our first team that is going to get to play in the Nationwide Arena, although we've got three more matches tonight to talk about. Let's go ahead and finish breaking this one down. Let me bring my analyst guys in. So again, you guys all basically leaned on Luminosity to win that. I'm going to start with you, Fifloren. You, you can, you, you, even with threat, you probably didn't think it was going to be a 16-5, or did you kind of think it was going to be a shellacky? I think that for Threat to call uh, the way that he's been calling coming into the tournament is a lot more difficult because he has to actually focus on himself playing at the same time. Uh, now, the result, I... Okay, I wasn't expecting a 16-5. I was probably expecting more of like a 16-8, 16-10. Uh, but it is extremely difficult, and especially in the beginning of the game because Luminous started CT side, lost pistol, won the eco, lost their anti-eco, and then won again. Like, the economy there is already shattered which only benefits the terrorists. Yeah. Every single time they get the bomb down, keeping the economy low for CTs, it only benefits the terrorists. And that's exactly what NIP started off with. And then you actually thought, well, this might actually get close. And then after that, Luminosity won a few consecutive rounds, uh, stabilized an economy. FNX was playing great. Yeah. yeah. Insane performance. 29 frags in 21 rounds. Uh, just just, uh, just top notch. Uh, and as for NIP, uh, it, it's it's obviously a shame that uh, Pats can't be here. This the, the this is the you know the scenario that we're at uh, coming into the tournament. They were looking great uh, with threat. I you know they they probably know better than you know anyone else in terms of like how 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 difficult it is to play with a stand-in. Uh, even though he's your coach, he's supposed to know everything. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, just for Luminosity at least, it's uh, they seem to be in form, uh, played great, and I'm excited to see them in in the quarterfinals. And you must. I mean, they do just have... Uh, Luminosity is one of those teams that's quietly become, you know, this team of, like, players who are just in really good roles, being utilized very, very well. And then much like some of, like, the, the heavy hitters, like the Fanatics, uh, Envy for a time, they have top to bottom a roster where all of these players can carry. FNX always having these impact rounds. We've seen Taco at, at Katowice yep. carry them through stretches. <clears throat> Fur carry them through stretches. Cold, we know he's he's carried them and Fallen as well. Has had six stretches of games where he's, he's basically been, the, you know, the mad star of this team. All of them have taken a turn, so now they have this roster, uh, and they're gaining all this experience of being in these deep tournament runs, um, and they're kind of they, they're they're hitting a really good peak here at the major. Um, this was surprising in how wide of a margin it was, um, to a certain extent. I mean, this is just one of those teams that can pile it on. They're so good tactically, so skilled individually. Um, the thing that you said, when the, once they stabilized, once they won those couple of rounds on the CT side, they never looked back. That's where you kind of see NIP with the stand and with, with Threat not sitting behind them. They don't have that capacity to make the adjustment to, to really get the momentum back away from Luminosity. And it was just all LG from there. Yeah, and you know what? Look, look, Luminosity are an amazing team. And uh, the good thing is, when a team is malfunctioning and, and, and maybe tactically, uh, it's not working. And again, coming into this, they did lose the likes of TSM, like on one map and, and Cloud9 and Winterfox and things like that. You know, it, you've got to have those guys who can step up and have a performance. Now, for the longest time, it was Cold Zero, but Fur's back and yeah. FNX is doing it. And as you said, when you get to a stage where even Taco can carry you through rough periods and he's inarguably the weakest player on the team, um, this, is, uh, th this is a very impressive run of form for them. For NIP, I'm not surprised. Mirage yeah. is a beast map for Luminosity and yeah. as good as it's been for NIP, um, you're playing it with a stand-in. I think that's deflated the NIP camp a little bit and uh, they were never going to be able to stand up to the likes of Luminosity on this one. So it, it kind of went par for the course. Not yeah. really a lot to yeah. and, and, and add. Thankfully for, for Ninjas and Pajamas, they are not out of the tournament. They now drop to the lower bracket of Group A, and that means they're going to take on Mouse Sports. And that will be a best of three tomorrow. So not out of it. Threat's got a little bit more work to do, a couple more maps to hopefully play. So we might see them still in the arena. You never quite know. But again, they are definitely handicapped with, that, with losing their, their starting five guys. Or fifth, I should say. Uh, our next match, though, also going to be a good one. One more North American shot. Well, we got two, but one more right now. Fanatic, Liquid. Oh, gentlemen, I, 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 I don't know what to say about this one. I mean, obviously, I want to wave my flag. I want to put your hat on. <laughs> but uh, the beast in the room, Fanatic. Um, we'll talk about it in detail. I'm yeah. going to stop staring at you guys. I'm going to throw out a commercial break because they're yelling at me in the ear. <laughs> so we will be right back after this quick commercial break, and then we're going to dive into Fanatic Liquid. Come on, NA. Let's do this. See you after the break. <laughs> 